I hope you're all uh, staying safe and doing well. I, I want to start with a question, if that's okay. The question is, where has your church moved to? Now, I know, I know the church is the body and it's not the building, but I want to ask you that question again. Where has your church moved to? Where are you finding these kind of thin places, these places where you can give room for God to experience him? I'll tell you what, a better question. Where are you finding space to worship God in song? Where, you, where are you able to close your eyes and sing in a loud voice the truths of who God is? Now, I am sure maybe a few months ago, some people would come to church and not really be in the mood, um, not really be in the headspace to worship and to sing to God. They would be thinking about how bad their week was and they would just find it difficult to, to sing about a loving God and a saving God when life was so difficult. Do you know, I reckon some of these people would probably turn up to church late just so they didn't have to worship. But is this you now? Have you lost the opportunity to worship God? Now we're in my kitchen and believe it or not, um, this is possibly where I do most of my singing and most of my worshipping to God. Uh, there's a loud speaker and um, it tends to get very loud as I do and the children have learned to just ignore me. But it's important, it's really important. Anyway, um, today we are looking at Psalm 98. Uh, it's a beautiful psalm, one that wants, one that wants to discover why we worship, how we worship, and who we worship. Now, what I want you to do now, a little bit different, it's, it's a bit kind of, we'll get involved. I'd like you to stop this video, okay? I'd like you to go and grab your Bible, and I'd like you to go and read Psalm 98 out loud for everybody to hear, okay? So, hit pause, Go and get Bible. I don't know why I swear like that. Go and get your Bible, Psalm 98, and read it. Once you've read it, come back, press play, and we'll, uh, we'll go through it together. It's beautiful, isn't it? Um, it's suggested that this psalm was written when Israel had had some kind of victory. They, they were doing really well. Um, writers also say but they brought it back in times when they were struggling and still celebrated what had happened. Some other writers suggest that this psalm is actually a prophecy. This is a prophecy of Jesus. Well, do you know, we read words in this psalm and in my translation it says, for he has done marvellous things with his right hand. His right hand is a description of Jesus, isn't it? He has revealed his righteousness to the nation. Sounds like Jesus again, doesn't it? All the ends of the earth have seen his salvation. For he has come to judge the world. Sounds like Jesus again. Can you see in this one piece of writing, um, written a thousand years before Jesus, it was true. And it would have been read by Jesus' disciples and other people that followed him when he was around. And it was true. And now we read it as Christians and it's still true. What an amazing piece of scripture, isn't it? Absolutely amazing. But it's really interesting. This psalm, which has been true throughout the whole of redemption for the earth and will continue to be starts with the words sing to the lord a new song we have this song that is true constantly and at the start it's suggesting write something new be something new 
but I have a different suggestion of what this translation means. Um, so, yeah, let's go for it. Let's see how you do and see if it fits. What if the line that says, sing to the Lord a new song, isn't talking about, it's, it's not talking about words. It's not talking about a style of worship. It's not talking about the tempo of worship, the musical instruments that you use, or how polished the performance is. What if, when it says, sing to the Lord a new song, it's talking about you? You and your faith. You, your faith, and the place that you worship. I heard earlier this week, and I've sort of forgotten about it, and it, it's been really kind of stirring into me. I heard worship is an act of faith. Now, I've understood that faith is a reliance on knowing the unseen, to know God. But I hadn't really remembered or grasped that worship is an act of faith. Look, every single one of us could read this psalm and it could sound similar. But I feel, I, I want to suggest that to God it sounds so different. Some of us will be reading this psalm full of faith, experiencing all like it's true now. Some of us will be reading this psalm full of faith, but because of experiences that's happened before. Some of us will be reading it and grasping onto our faith because we just can't see it anywhere. The thing is, within this psalm, our place, our vision, our experience may be different and will sound different to God, but this psalm's still true. And they will always be true. In Philippians, it says this. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. In heaven, on earth and under earth. And every tongue will declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. For the glory of God the Father. When we step into our fullness of faith into the fullness of God's love, into the fullness of God's glory, it will be true, because it's always true. So, I want to encourage you today. I want you to read this psalm over and over again. Bring the truth of this psalm into your life and sing to the Lord a new song. Sing it loud and clear, holding on to the truth of your faith. Sing it for all to hear. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant sound with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing. With trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn, shout for joy before the Lord the King. Let the sea resound and everything in it the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the people with equity. Lord, I pray that we can experience you, that we can have moments where we feel free to worship you for all the truths that you bring into our life. Lord, may you bless us, may you sustain us in this challenging time. Amen. Thank you, guys. See you soon.